Hello guys, today is not a Yamaha day, it's an Aprilia day, we are going to change the oil on that. It's a very detailed video, I'm explaining a lot of stuff, so that's why it's a little bit longer, but I really appreciate if you watch it all the way through. And uh, let's start, I'll see you after the intro. There's three places you need to drain. The tank here, the 10 mil bolt. There is another bolt there, which uh, behind this this pipe. Um, it's a six mil Allen key bolt, and obviously you need to take the filter out as well. So we're just gonna drain the oil first from the tank, and then I'm gonna show you the other bolt a little bit closer. Obviously you have to warm the engine up first, which I did. So I would say about 50 degrees, maybe 50 degrees Celsius. The other bolt which is going to drain the engine is that one over there, which I've put the Allen key in so you can see it better. It's a 6 mil Allen key. Uh, make sure it's all the way in because you don't want to strip the Allen head because then, oh, you're going to be in trouble. And then you're going to have to remove this bracket right there. You're gonna have to remove this bracket so you can get this pipe out of the way and then you can get to the filter which is uh, all three of them is a five mil allen bolt uh, and be prepared for a little oil spillage because it, it will let's try again there you go we are going to change all the cross washers obviously the one on the tank and one on this one as well this one has a magnet. So that's that's the oil from the engine. Because this is a, a dry dry sump engine. So if you just just drain the oil from the, the tank, from the tank you're actually leaving quite a bit of an oil in the engine. <coughs> which you don't want. We are gonna change that washer as well always ends up on the exhaust a little bit you can't do anything about it just wipe it off and then just let it burn let it burn off when you start the engine you don't need to worry about it it's just gonna smoke a little bit but then it's gonna be gone all right next you're gonna have to take this bolt out so we can move this out of the way and then we can get to the filter It's already leaking, that's good. I'm just gonna leave it like that. If you if you pull it out quickly, it might just poof, spills spills everywhere. You don't want that. So I just let it drip out like that. <clears throat> and the dripping slowed down, so I'm gonna just take the filter out. Get them bolts out. I'm gonna put the new O-ring there. I'll show you in a minute. There is an o-ring right there on this cap. Uh, you you do want to change it because it only gets a slight push when you tighten down the the cover. And if the o-ring is slightly worn, then it will start leaking. So that's important. Uh, make sure you get a new o-ring. I'm gonna put up the the size right over here. What size the o-ring is, so you can find it for yourself. Then just gently pull the filter out. It's pretty much only one way this filter goes in. There you go. So the filter's got a relief valve here and this is how it looks like the in internal side. So you can't really put it the wrong way around. I, I suppose you can but Make sure that big rubber seal goes inside there and the relief valve is outside. 
Right, I'm gonna leave it uh, dripping a little bit more and uh, then we're gonna start putting it back together. Right, okay, so when you change the o-ring on the filter cover, make sure you push it all the way back so it doesn't look like, like it is now. Uh, make sure you push it all the way back because it just makes makes it easier when you install it back on the back on the engine. Right, so I'll give it a nice wipe in there when the o-ring seals before you put the filter back on because it I let it drip overnight to make sure I got everything out. It just got over a little bit on the on the engine casing. But just so uh, you remember to make sure you clean it properly. And obviously you can you need to wipe off the exhaust as well. But that's gonna burn off anyway. So I'm not too not too worried about that. So I'm gonna put the filter back on. Back on. We're gonna put the new filter in. This is a K and N filter. Uh, if you remember I showed you this is the one going inside and the relief valve is outside. But before you put the new filter in just give a tiny bit of an oil on the on that rubber so it slides in slides in easier in the metal bit inside there because it's it's a little bit dry and then just wiggle it in and you should feel it when it's all the way in it just basically stops stops quite firmly now we have the filter cover with the new o-ring, just gonna put a tiny, tiny oil around the o-ring, and I'm gonna wipe it off. That's just, just a really, really small amount of uh, oil moist on it, so it's it doesn't drag on the metal. That's all, really. So, and then we just put it in, line it up to the holes. Get your 5mm allen key and just put the screws back in. Just do one at a time a little bit, then the other one a little bit until you, you can feel the bolt like stops and then get your torque wrench and give it 10 newton meters. Then we're gonna just double check it. And that's it. Make sure you change both uh, bolts, crush washers, put new ones on before you fit them back on. And uh, just gonna give it give it a quick wipe before I fit them back in. Annoying this one is because this pipe is in the way and I can't really put the torque wrench on it as well. So that's gonna be a bit uh, difficult to do, but we're just gonna go the old-fashioned way, not red face tight, but tight. Just you, you can uh, feel the crush washer actually doing its job and crushing. So just give it like a. When you put the force on it, it just starts to slide, and you can feel it. <clears throat> That's it. It's it feels like you stripping the thread. But but you don't. Unfortunately, because of this pipe, you can't you can't put a torque wrench in there because it, it just got too big head, and you need a socket kind of thing, and which is about this long, and it, it just just in the way. So you got to do the old-fashioned way this one. But we're gonna do the sump one. We're gonna do like we should. Give it the tank wipe, and just screw this back in. I'm just gonna make it a little bit tight. So I'm gonna set the torque wrench to 15 newton meters. 15. And then it's done. That tank is aluminium, so no need to be super tight. That's why it's set to 15. And then just one last bolt you need to put back in, which holds this bracket right over there back into the bracket and back into that alternator housing so I'm gonna set it to 12 newton meters and uh, tighten it up oh 
ok. All done. Now what we gotta do is uh, fill it back with oil. Uh, I find it the easiest way to do that. If you remove uh, this cover, then you can get to the filler point a lot easier. To remove the fairing, you are going to need a 4mm Allen key. I use this tool, a Vera tool. I do recommend them, you're gonna find it. I'm gonna put the link over there so you can find it, uh, which tools I recommend to use. So anyway, back to the subject. 4mm Allen key, three bolts, one here, one there, and one front of the indicator. Just gonna pop them off. Don't lose them. Depends what kind of indicator you have. You might have to disconnect it because the indicator is uh, attached to the fairing. I'm gonna put that there so I can rest it on that. You pull it out and then down a little bit to get the front front out and then just gently gently wiggle it out that's it not too difficult and I'm just gonna rest it on this chair I put here that's it so now we can get to the filler cup a lot easier okay let me grab the oil we're gonna use this oil today. Loads of people recommend it. I, I used it in this bike for years. I had no troubles with it, no clutch problems. Very good, very good oil. I never had a problem with it. Uh, there is a tiny oil consumption on these bikes anyway. No matter what oil you use as far as I'm aware. Um, well, that's kind of kind of normal. My friend's Duono, which has got the Similar engine to this one. It's a Gem 1 Tuono, but it's got the big valve engine, not the small valve like this one. But they do consume a little bit. So now I've put about uh, three and a half liters in, roughly about three and a half liters, and uh, the oil is all the way up to about here. But like I said, we're going to start the engine, it's going to suck some in to fill the oil filter and the other bits. 10 15 seconds, let it, let it settle, then you can put put another 100-200 mil in uh, because all together is about 3.7-3.8 liters the capacity of, of this engine but you need to ride it for at least 4-5 uh, miles and then come back and then check it properly These Aprilias, uh, you have got to ride them for about 5 miles then check the oil level after you shoot the engine, wait a minute and then check it to make sure it's in the right level otherwise you can uh, easily overfill it just here because I'm going in two minutes anyway the new owner is uh, coming today to pick up this bike engine shut off get off keep it steady and check the oil level yeah that's what I was expecting it's about halfway it needs a couple hundred mil I think maybe 100 150 mil and that should do it Thank you for watching this oil change tutorial. You can use this for RSV Millet and Tuono. If you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you're new here and you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hello guys, welcome back from self-isolation. <laughs> loads of things needs to be... Yes. Uh, loads of things... <laughs> Uh, please, if you like the bottom, just hit that uh, hit that like button. If you like this button. <laughs>